Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Esoteric Atlanta um, with your, your, your weekly chatting session, friend chatting session with cat coffee chat with my, one of my besties, Catherine Edwards and her, I, when you signed on, I was like, your hair looks so beautiful. I didn't even wash mine today. And look at yours. Oh, <laughs> thank you. It looks, it looks gorgeous. Well, before we get into the matter at hand, you guys, I just want to very quickly, something that's near and dear to both Catherine and my heart. We have a baby boy. Um, they're calling him Butch. He is in an animal sanctuary in South Carolina. He's about four months old. He was found briefly. I'll give you that the synopsis. I have a video over on my channel. He was somebody basically, I think from what I understand, threw him out of a car, which I cannot. There's a special place in hell for people that do that kind of stuff. And he was found on the side of a, a busy freeway with a very bad broken leg. They tried to save the leg, but eventually they did have to amputate the leg. And he, he one of um, our subscribers, one of our friends who watches our channel, her sister is works for the sanctuary. And so she reached out to me to try to find a home for Butch, for this little baby boy. Um, she sent me some updated pictures. You can definitely tell that he is healing and he is learning how to play with three legs. I, I, as I said, I think on um, Instagram, I think uh, he looks way more handsome with three legs. He's such a cutie. Um, and they're looking for a home. Now, I will say, I know that we have a lot of people from all over the world watching right now. But I also know that Catherine has people in Canada and the United States. Now, I know from my dog rescue as an American, because Butch is here in South Carolina in the United States, the only people that are going to be able to helpfully adopt him, what I mean by that is that he will not have to go into quarantine, is United States uh, citizens or Canadians. Canadians can absolutely adopt him. He will go straight across the border. He'll get a little passport. My dog has a little passport. And I know from our dog rescue in India, as Americans, we send the dogs to either America or Canada because, again, they do not have to be in quarantine. We do not want to put an animal lock an animal in a cage for six months you know so um so if there's anybody in the united states or in canada who is interested in adopting butch the phone number and the email address is right up here this link will be in the description box below like i said he is in a sanctuary he is receiving medical attention is there anything you want to add to this with animal rescue catherine yeah, I mean, first and foremost, I know so many people that have got three legged dogs and they live a long and very happy life. It will not hold him back at all. It won't hold you back in terms of what you can do with him. He's a young boy. He'll heal perfectly and quickly. Um, so that is just makes him just even more special. Um, and I would say, even though we don't have quarantine now in the UK, haven't for a while, but that it would be far better if he goes somewhere local, because obviously in his little life, he's been through a lot of stress. So to have him go somewhere local and the best thing as you, you know, we talk about it all the time, but bringing a dog like this into your life will be the best thing you ever do. They will reward you a million times back um he deserves it and sometimes with all the stuff that's going on in the world it can be well you know i've got more important things but there is no important thing it's saving one life at a time and actually when you pour your love into someone that deserves it so much look that butch you'll find that so many other areas of your life will start to approve Absolutely. I don't know what I would do without Ravi. I um I actually posted a video on Instagram. The uh, uh, Hawaiian word for being a pet owner is kahu, kahu, and it basically means it makes me emotional that you're their protector. Yeah, you're there. You're responsible for their soul, and so that word kahu is just to me that it makes me just so emotional. It means so much more than just saying I own this dog. No, you are their protector. You have been picked and anointed to be to 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 heart to, to carry their soul for them. And so um I know that I I know that in adoptions for children when children are adopted, um I know that it's 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 customary to say when the, when so and so came home, right? When the, the the when 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 a little Johnny came home. And I think that should be for animal adoption too. So when, when Butch comes home, so if you are Butch's home, um, I am very close to the sanctuary in South Carolina, and I've been in touch with the two sisters who are 
doing a lot right now and i know that they are loving on the, the i'll have to send you the venios catherine because they are just adorable with them playing with him he's learning how to sit and how to do all sorts of stuff and you can definitely tell from this picture when he was first brought into now his eyes are brighter so he's already experiencing a lot of love and um and i live very close so if there's anything i can do for anybody to help get the dog to to get get him to his forever home just let me know um i agree with you there i would take a bullet for my dog i would without hesitation lay my life down for ravi because they are such a part of our family and um and yeah his his life as um the gospel of the nazarene way which is one of the missing books of the bible where yashua basically has the whole thing is like if you want to follow in this path of enlightenment you don't eat meat and you don't hurt animals because do as he says in this this gospel do they not breathe the same air that you breathe are they not your brothers and sisters and so um thank god thank you to the veterinarians who have stepped in to help him and they I I do bryce why don't you and i club together and send him some masia because that will we can then show them how to use it with the treat and that will massively speed up his record his um recovery both the gel and the things because with the cell regeneration from what he's been through let, let's do that i will get in touch so when we get off i will message i, I don't i don't want to dot i know they're private people so i'm, I'm just saying this yeah. and i've actually offered if they wanted to come on the show and talk about it i actually absolutely i live close and so um i'm wondering now too i could just drive a box of asia to them and film it and and visit because you're right this would be amazing to help him i mean ravi asks for asia every morning he, he has a different asia bowl and he, he knocks it for his asia absolutely and so this baby boy i mean he's so deserving i want to quickly just show the general guys so you know um he is a mixed breed which is is awesome probably the healthier the more mixed you are the healthier approximately four months old male size medium um, he, they say he's not house trained yet, but I've seen videos of them already working with him. Um, this, of course, for people who see this, Catherine and I, we've spoken about this before. When you're rescuing animals, you have to do these things in order to get them into a safe environment. So I think you've said it best, uh, Catherine, it's, it's the lesser of two evils. Um, Absolutely. For my dog, we had to get certain ones done and for her, in order for him to be able to come into the United States. And then once he was with us, we ceased to do any more of those. Um, once he was in his home, he is not new, uh, he's not neuter, neutered yet. And I think it's adorable. He's missing his legs. So, so um, I know that I was told people are making donations too for the people who can't adopt. They are sending donations. Every little bit helps with these sanctuaries to help them house these animals and, and rehabilitate them. And if I lived in it, I, I, sat with my boyfriend and i would love more than anything to be able to take butch if we already lived in florida or had a bigger house i absolutely would have already gone and picked him up um so but un unfortunately our place is so small it's not even fair to, to robbie we have now that it's so small so to have two would be hard for butch when i know that there's a family out there that can give him the yard and the kids i mean god I, the kids are to have kids to have him have grow up with kids and um so yes you guys please again all the information is right up here with the phone number i will put the website down in the description box below um and even if you live in europe or the uk and you know of an american family you think would want this baby send them this link even if they're not viewers of this channel just send them the link and send them butch's information because the more eyes we have on this the quicker we're going to find his family love it awesome all right well catherine <laughs> we're gonna talk about really kind of evolving and changing opinions and um the process of being human and we kind of text each other this morning kind of both said the same thing in different ways of what we wanted to talk to and i'll just start off saying that i had a comment that really you know when you have a youtube channel you develop a very thick skin you know trolls exist they exist but this one comment really pissed me off and i ended up blocking the person because it was just so inappropriate and so not the point of being a human um and i'm paraphrasing what this person said this person said basically that she was upset and confused because my opinions have changed on the three years that i have been on youtube 
which I've said that many, Catherine, we've talked about that a lot, about how our, how our opinions have changed and evolved. And I don't take any of my videos down. And the only videos that have come down have come down by the platform because I'm not ashamed of the fact that my opinions have changed because that's part of being human. And my reaction to that was, first of all, how dare you put that responsibility on me to not evolve and change? And how dare you get mad that by me evolving, growing and changing and changing the opinion that that has some bearing on your happiness. I can't, you, you don't want me to, vol to, to evolve and change because you don't want to change, right? If that makes sense. And I thought we needed to talk about this because I think Catherine, that sometimes people see us on our YouTube channels and they have these, I mean, I know not everybody, but these perceptions when really we're just two human beings, just like everybody watching right now. And, and everybody's, I mean, thank God we change, right? Like, thank God our, 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 when your opinions don't change, you're in limitation. You're closed minded at that point. Yeah, it's such an important topic because, um, and there's so many different areas to uh, uh, discuss on this, but you know, there's a reason why when you grow up, you don't believe in Father Christmas and the Tooth Fairy anymore. Um, there's a reason why you don't behave like a 15 year old when you're in your 30s, hopefully, because everything is about changing. But we've also, both of us have talked an awful lot over the last few years about cult behavior. And one of the things you see in cult behavior and religious fanaticism is basically that no one is allowed to evolve. No one's allowed to have their own opinion. You stick to the narrative and that's it. And it's laughable, really. It's really ironic that people watching channels like this, and we know it's only a small minority, but it's something that we've seen growing considerably, actually, are the ones that are preaching not change because it's such an oxymoron that you want to say that you're awake to what's going on in the world, but you're not going to change. By the very nature of people realising what's going on, it's an ongoing evolution for all of us and it will never end. And to think that people aren't going to change opinions would be absolutely horrifying because if you are presented with new information and you don't look at that and aren't open to changing your opinion, then you are in the ultimate brainwash state. And you're going into death because there's no yeah. growth without. And that's that really, it really concerns me that absolutely, like we know that there are nefarious players in the world. We know that. We know that, that the truth is not what we've been told is not the truth. We get that. But for me specifically, there's been so much derangement and so much junk conspiracy that I had to start questioning a lot of my own beliefs because I started to see that there were fallacies in some of these um in some of these these theories and because I start my, my channel is a research channel that's how it started off it started off as a research channel it's not it's it's a, a way for me to do deep dives and like say this is weird guys what do you think you know, mm -hmm. and, and and kind of exploring, exploring things like Tartaria, exploring things, you know, like the missing books, the Bible and, and having opinions change and, and, and expanding. Because what do the Cassiopeians say? The Cassiopeians say that truth is infinite. It's never ending. And when we put a cap on it, when we say this is the truth, this person's bad, this person's good, there's no if, ands or buts about it, then we are pr starting the process of death because we've stopped growing. 100%. And the thing is, the whole point is lots of people change. And, you know, if you're in a relationship, you change as you grow. If you have children, that changes things, um, changes your outlook on life completely. And I'm not differentiating here between two and four legged children. Every life important life stage, change when you lose loved ones. I mean, I know when I lost my father, you know, one of my friends said, you know, like when your parents die, it's like a club that everyone's going to join at some stage, but no one wants to be part of. And and I thought that was beautifully explained. So every life event, big or small, will change you. If you're resisting that change, therein lies the conflict and the projection. Because if you're re resisting a change in yourself, if you're trying to stop anyone else changing, then it's always about what's going on with you and why you're scared to change and what, what's going on for you emotionally. And instead of admitting that, people have this awful habit now of projecting on and being someone else's fault. And I do think that it's so much easier to do that online than it is face to face. Because they don't know it. 
you know, round with a group of friends or something. And I know school people can be mean at times, but you've still got to deal with it. You've still got the opportunity for a two way conversation. But when you're just leaving something like that, there's so many misinterpretations and you're not engaging in any and just trying to understand where the other person's come from at all. Right. I mean, I keep reverting back to, and I think too, as you're saying this, Catherine, I'm sitting here thinking about a lot, because we do have some incredible subscribers, like people yeah. that are awesome. And so I can't help but feel that even for the, our friends watching right now that don't have a platform, how are you experiencing? Because I know a lot of our subscribers are very much in agreement with us that, that, that maybe we've gone a little too far and we got to come back to middle ground somewhere. And how awful that is to be in the world where one set of people are radicalized on the left and another set of people are radicalized on the right and you don't fit in either group. And yeah. so I think part of this too is to say like, yeah, Catherine and I experienced this on a very big platform, but that is not taking away from our friends watching right now that are experiencing this in their own lives as well um, with people that maybe they, you know, like I I'm still in a state of shock that the fact that I don't believe that there's an actual bed that's going to take all your problems away how people then because i don't believe that exists now look all of a sudden my my moral character is at, in question you know that like this extreme viewpoint which is very cult-like you know the fact that i don't believe in a med bed all of a sudden means that i'm a terrible person and this is what's so laughable and again we know the reason we have these coffee chats is because we're having these coffee chats with the people watching because yeah. we do understand you know we're going through exactly the same as all as you guys are and it's it's absolutely hysterical really where if we take the med bed so most people on this channel are very against that e -e 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 -e. Mm -hmm. or, or i'm making that assumption anyway but the whole point is one of the laughable things is we sort of say well if you believe this works why do we need it if you believe your yeah. mask works why do we need it and it's exactly the same with this if the medwed if Bryce or I think something about it that's different for you why does it matter because if your faith or belief or understanding or inner knowing or intuition whatever you want to call it is strong enough then it doesn't matter what we believe. You know, I sent you the meme that someone sent me the other day that, you know, when you finish gossiping about me, please pray for me because I want to be perfect like you. And right. that's it. Yeah, it's like every single person watching this will have their own set of beliefs. They'll have their own experiences associating with that. And for me, a sign of spiritual maturity is, as we've said so many times before, when you can entertain an idea and not be attached to it. Because I have been wrong so many times over the course of my life. Thank and you. I still will be long. And everything is a hard lesson. I will share that I've just lost two of my old guinea pigs within a week of each other. And I've had guinea pigs all my life. And I look after them to the best of my ability. But I'm not arrogant enough to think that there's not more I can do to do better. So when tragedy like this strikes, I'm going to do all I can to learn even more and even more so I can be an even better parent and to my animals. Because I don't know everything. I'm not saying it was my fault. I don't know why they died. I mean, unfortunately, guinea pigs do die suddenly and they were old. But equally... I, you know, I'm still not, I'm still going to keep an open mind and constantly learn and constantly try and do better, learn more. Um, there's never a time when that ends for any of us. And I think with the division that's happened with people being ostracized from family members with what's happening, it's no different to what happened when people choose religion or politics. We've got to stop this extreme behavior. If we can't be compassionate to let other people be themselves, and it's okay to say, I hear you, I don't agree with you, but I respect your opinion. Yeah, exactly. And it's, it's, I was saying before we started filming, Catherine, that I, I just had this like, we, we laugh about like the woke group, right? We laugh mm -hmm. about the people on the left that are woke and they're offended by everything. And, Lately, I've been like, well, the same is true about our community. Absolutely. You know, where, where you can say, I, I don't believe in a med bed, and all of a sudden you're chastised as some terrible, horrible, psychotic person because you don't. But in the meantime, I, I mean, I'm just going to say, you know, Catherine and I and our friends have offered free shadow work challenges. We've done giveaways to help with the ASEA. So we're actually trying to help people help themselves but because we don't believe that there is this magic bed that's going to make all your dreams come true, all of a sudden we're, we're and that's very much cult behavior. 
And it's, it's shocking. It's absolutely shocking because, you know, we see that again with the woke community where you have to agree with everything somebody says in the woke community or else you're garbage. And, yeah. and we're seeing that now on our side, that if you don't agree with everything, the fact that I've said, I don't actually think they're white hats. I think mm. they're white hats. And all of a sudden people get pissed and mad. I'm like, but that's more power for you because you're the one that's making these shifts and these changes. You know, the fact that um, we've talked about with Mr. Fox that the, the bad guys have not surrendered because according to the law of one, which is looking at a scientific perspective of polarization, in order for somebody to surrender is service to others and that depolarizes them. And we're on third density where there has to be that polarity. So to sit with blinders on and to think that everything nefarious that's happening is actually something, some, some show by some good guy, to, for us to say, wait a minute, hold on. That's not necessarily true because innocent, like Hawaii, for example, innocent lives are being lost. So we have to get out of this cognitive dissidence of thinking, you know, of seeing the truth, but believing the lie. All of a sudden, we're the bad guys. And that, again, is a sign of a cult. It's a sign of very, very dangerous. And so when people's opinions change, there's a, there's a great saying, I, I think it's probably a global saying, opinions are like assholes. Everyone's got one. Absolutely. And it's good to have an opinions. We want everyone to have an opinions. We all should have opinions, but we shouldn't be too attached to them. There's, I can honestly say there's not a single subject that I'm not open to you new information about. Not a single one. Now, I can also honestly say that there's some subjects that I find very easy to be completely objective about. Mm -hmm. So take my talks with Ishmael Perez. I, that is not a subject I know a lot about, all the different extraterrestrials, the real history of the world. And I might have my own opinions and there'll be bits that really resonate and bits don't, but I just find it fascinating. Like your channel is a research channel. My channel is expanding consciousness through curiosity. It's asking questions. What if? What if this? And thank goodness, because if I hadn't had that attitude of asking questions, I could have made some really seriously bad decisions over the last few years that we're now seeing fruition for people that have. But equally, I have made bad decisions in the past, and I'm lucky enough that I've lived through the experience to learn from it. So I think the beauty of this world is it's like when you see yourself reacting, and I think everyone in our community is experiencing this probably in some aspects of their lives. They've either been ostracized from family members for their beliefs or for their actions or not conforming to the the expectations of parents or teachers or whatever it might be, or it might be worse than that. And they might have actually had to remove themselves from situations because of abuse and things. But what you do notice, and you notice this when people like with your interview with Claire Headley, for example, and I'm speaking to her in a week or two's time, when you notice through loads of people that have been through real, real trauma, and we all have to some extent, but the resilience and the openness to say, yeah, I can see how I got into this and now I'm going to course correct and start again and move on and create because I've been through something so awful. I don't want anyone else to have to go through that. And I'm going to do everything I can to try and share the lessons I've learned to help others go through the same thing. Oh, absolutely. And it is, I, I told Claire this, and I've said it many, many times before, I'm so excited that we're working with her and going to be doing more shows with her because that group of ex-Scientologists, they call themselves the SP, suppressive person. And she talked about that on my channel, of owning that name of suppressive yeah. person. And when I love their channels, I watch their channels all the time. And I told Claire this, and I believe it 100%. The sensational story of Scientology, our friend Kelly Teal from Nexium, that's what catches people's attention. But the story dissipates over time. What keeps people around is, is their resilience, is watching exactly. these people change their, leave everything behind because they had an opinion change and then rebuild their lives. And to see them, they're funny. They laugh together. They all have different belief systems now and they don't judge each other for it. And I've heard yep. them say so many times, we don't care what you believe. It's what, what you do that matters. Yeah. And I think there's so much we can learn from them about what they've been through and how they've, they've really used that friction to shine their light brighter versus trying to punish 
and, and you know, we can't be, if we are so upset by the horrific things that have happened in our world over the last, what, like five years, of course, mm -hmm. the epitome of 2020, we're so upset because we've had so, so much of our liberty stripped from us and we've gone through so much, then we have to be aware of what happened to us and not do it to other people. Not yeah. be that person. I know I told, I don't know if I said this on air or off air. I mean, I've read wild conspiracies about myself that aren't true. And I've always, with this, I'm very anti this. We don't come near me with that bullshit. I don't want, I don't want it. However, however, if somebody else wants it, I'm not going to stop them because that's their free will choice. We should be able to choose. And I read somebody saying that because I said that, because I said people should have a right to choose whether they get this or not, then all of a sudden I'm pro this. And that's just derangement. That is a deranged way of thinking. So you're telling me that you're all upset because these people over here are forcing this on, trying to force this on you. And your solution to that is to do the same thing by pulling people's freedom of choice away. So you're just doing the same thing the bad guys are doing. It's so it's so ludicrous. And this is the thing, when you're caught in this trap of being so resistant to change, you can't see it properly. And, and what's so funny is the people that comment like that, is they're the ones who are laughing at everyone else for being sheeple and how can you not see Bill Gates as evil? And yet they're behaving in the same way. And I think the thing is, it's like how looking at all of our actions and sort of saying, okay, where if I, I mean, I, I was talking, who was I talking to the other day um, on one of my interviews? I can't remember who it was. And I, I just hung my head in shame because we were talking about people saying about having the flu jab. Now, of course, if you're a parent or if you've got someone you love and care about, if you've got real information about something, then it can be your duty of care to share it. But sharing it is completely different for trying to coerce someone into making a decision. And I tried to coerce my mother into making a decision the other way. Luckily, she ignores everything I say anyway. Sort of. She doesn't. She does look at the information, but she's certainly not going to comply with what her daughter says. So I, I can laugh. But I had to laugh at myself because I caught myself doing that sort of behavior and sort of acting like, you know, don't be so ridiculous. She's a grown adult. She's been around a lot longer than I am. I can give her some information. Other people can make her information and then she can make her own mind up. And we do that in every area of our lives as adults all the time. It's sad that we don't allow our animals to do it enough. But therefore, you know, wh where do you draw the line? Do you draw the line about drinking Coca-Cola? That's really bad for you. That's very toxic. Do you, where do you draw the line? Where do your morals start and end? Because that line is going to be completely different for everyone. And we really have got no business Unless, like you always say, when it's something, let's take geoengineering, if someone's doing something that is affecting the health, the wealth, the safety of loads of other people, that's different. But when you're just desperate for someone to agree with your opinion and you're not going to budge and whatever evidence comes your way, you're not going to change, then that's not a good survival strategy. No, it's not. And it's there's a, there's a saying, I'm trying to remember how it goes. I'm going to paraphrase it because it's so true. When you truly believe something, when you in your core believe something to be true, nothing anybody says is going to shake that. Yeah. So most of the time when people are very comfortable with what they believe, they're not triggered by other people having different opinions. Mm. But if you're uncomfortable with what you believe, meaning you don't really believe what you claim to believe, any difference of opinion is going to trigger that. And so when we see people reacting so violently because you have a different opinion, because I don't believe that everyone in Hollywood is bad, mm. because I don't believe that every person who got this is bad, mm. and that triggers someone, it's because they're not comfortable with what they have been forced to feel like they have to believe in order to belong to a group, in order to belong to this truther group, whatever it is. And so that's something for people to, and, and again, we, we're preaching to the choir because we have so many incredible people that watch that are like us that know there's weird shit out there and there's definitely aliens and there's definitely a nefarious, but also are able to be very grounded within their own lives and to understand that nothing is black. If you are looking at things black and white, 
they're either evil or they're not evil, then you are in what psychology calls a mental disorder. Yeah, you know, it's very gray. Yeah. It's very gray and out there and people and, and that's the thing, too. And I and I, I, you know, I know when we're on YouTube and we're doing our videos, we have a specific topic that we're talking about. But in our real lives, you know, in my real life, I don't I don't care what what people are doing in their houses, I, whatever makes you as long as you're not hurting someone. As long as you are not hurting someone or an animal or anything or coercing anybody, then you do you boo. Like whatever makes you happy. I don't, I don't care what, if going, if, you know, I, I, I come down on the church a lot on my channel because that's part of my research, but mm. I'm never on a church's YouTube channel making comments. I don't troll churches. If going to church makes you feel better, that's fine. Then do it. My, does that make sense? Like it's, it's yeah. I think this is so so important. It's like we've all got to find our own way in this world, and and wanting to belong is really ingrained within us. You know, we are a tribal species. Mm -hmm. Supposedly, <laughs> I mean, I have to laugh because everything I say, it's like when we say we're all humans. We're like, well, are we? Um, are we? <laughs> You know, so everything's up for grabs now. That's why I'm laughing. But, you know, if if we believe that all the evidence does suggest by human behavior and human psychology that we are designed to live in communities, in tribes, and that's what gives us the greatest protection, the greatest sense of security. So, again, I completely get why people do belief in this because we've all seen what happens when certain people decide to leave churches and things they can be treated really harshly ostracized by people shamed and everything so of course there are risks that some people have experienced in their life by not conforming and I think it's a bit like you know if you've got any sort of addiction you've got to first be the one to admit you've got a problem so some people are more triggered by it because they've had some awful experience that's made them think this isn't safe for me to express another opinion I've got to stay rooted that's my form of safety but most people by the turn to the adults they realize that if that's trauma based then it would be in their best interest to get some help to work through that trauma, not to, as you say, pass it on. It's like when they say hurt people hurt people, which actually I really do believe in. I know a lot of people don't. That's fine. I do see that happening um, a lot. But, you know, therefore, how can you reach out and be that person to break the cycle? And I think that's what all of us and our listeners are trying to be, was we're trying to be the people in our families, in our community that do try and break that sample, that cycle of blame, of shame, of not listening to something else. Because some of this new opinion could, li these new things and remaining open to them could literally save our lives, as we've seen over the last few years. Absolutely. And it's interesting when you're saying that, because I do believe hurt people hurt people. But as I saw on um, Instagram, I thought it was brilliant. Hurt people hurt people, healed people, heal people. Yeah. So if you do the work, then you're in a place of being able to offer support to someone else. And I, as you're saying that too, I was like, this really comes down. I feel like to people's fear of being alone as well, of being and 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 sometimes in life, as my grandfather used to say, there's there's nothing you can't control. And the only thing you control in your life is yourself. You've seen it. They can take everything. Your friends could abandon you tomorrow. Your spouse could abandon you. They can take everything from you, but you have to be comfortable with being within yourself. And I was thinking, Catherine, because I was like, I, I think we should do another like a 10 day shadow work challenge. Maybe we should like focus on that of like the reality of, of being with yourself, being able to sit yeah. within your own sense of self. And that's what, and my boyfriend's really big about that. He talks about that a lot. And it's, he's very wise. He's done a lot of work on himself. And he's like, you know, that's the big difference between like a narcissist and a souled person, a person with a soul, is that if you have a soul, then you have an intuitive sense of self. There's yeah. always, but the narcissist doesn't have that. And so it's an empty void. And so they're constantly trying to pull from other people and control other people in order to maintain some false sense of self. But a, a person that's fully sold will be able to rest within their sense of self. And I know that's, that's me. I know that I can, you know, we, we've, been through shit on this platform where we've taken a lot of crap and we developed thick skins for it and it's fine because i know who i am and i know yeah. i have a good heart and i know that i do a lot to help people and i know that i want you know even though my chin and, and again i want to reiterate that guys thinking about this logically Catherine and i are two human beings who have we're friends off we, we met on youtube we're friends outside of youtube we speak outside of our our shows but we have 
an existence beyond the work we present on the channel. I have an existence beyond when I'm doing a show on the missing books, the Bible, I'm talking about the conspiracies, what the church has done, what happens in these councils. But when I'm at the grocery store, I'm not even thinking about it. Yeah. People often say to me, what do you think about this? And I'm like, I don't. It's I don't not something I want to put my energy and attention to. And then other times, like everyone else, I love watching a bit of reality TV. <laughs> you know, yeah. and so um, I, I think for us to lighten up, I mean, let's take the situation in Hawaii at the moment. Absolutely horrific. We can all have our own opinions about what's going on. And a lot of that will be based on what information has been shared with us um, or what our beliefs were going into it or what someone, 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 someone has said on Telegram that's been passed around 50 times like Chinese whispers. Now, I'm not I'm very grateful for these alternative channels that have sprung up, but it is literally like the blind leading the bride. Years ago, I left all the natural health channels on Facebook because the advice that was being given was so dangerous and so bad and so wrong. And, and there's a reason why they say a little knowledge is a dangerous thing. A little knowledge is fine so long as you realise you've got a little knowledge. But when you think your little bit of knowledge is the gospel truth, you can do a lot of damage with that. And we've seen this play out and we're very ready to criticise politicians and decision makers for doing that but we've got to also sort of say well where are we doing that in our own lives and perhaps course correct a little bit well that's what i've said too you know we, we judge not least ye be judged that's a verse mm -hmm. from the bible that i actually really agree with judge not least ye be judged here we are i'll say it again i think i've said this every show if we do some self-reflection we get really mad at, i i'm frustrated that my parents keep Fox News 24 hours going on their TV because I know that they're being lied to. I know that. But, and that's mass formation psychosis, when they, they tell you a lie over and over and over and over again that you start to believe it as truth. But we see people in this community, and I've been guilty of it, where we get mad, I get mad at my parents for believing Fox News, but yet I'm doing the same thing by believing some youth youtuber that doesn't Confirmation bias is huge and you know we will all naturally look out for something that backs up our opinion on something Absolutely. that is part of human nature and again let's not bash the fact well you know there's a good thing a lot of good things supposedly about humans <laughs> um there are look at the people that have rescued that lovely dog butch so there are some really good humans around but when we realize that we all have confirmation bias then just be gentle with it and just accept that's a fact except that i am definitely when trust me when i'm having a discussion with my husband i'm going to look for every little bit of evidence that backs up my opinion and he's going to look for every bit of evidence that backs up his opinion and it's a bit like you know your fairy is better than my fairy you, you it doesn't matter yeah. you can find it's like with science you can find any answer you want you can manipulate it to be any answer you want so, so long as we realize that and then therefore deal with that information accordingly, we're not going to go far wrong. Yeah. And I was just, as you were saying that, I'm sitting here thinking too, like with the Hawaii thing, it's like everybody's so invested in being right yeah. and being sanctimonious about how it happened that are we even focusing on the fact that it did happen and we need to help? yeah right we know it wasn't natural we know but we don't know the details and i don't think we will until we do but at mm -hmm. this point there are animals and human beings that need our help and so that should be the focus not oh it was this or it was that that if you are sitting around debating over how it happened at this moment then your your attention your focus is in the wrong area right and and that's those people debating it aren't in a position to stop it happening elsewhere it's already starting to happen in Greece, apparently, while I was uh, along with Santi. And so the, the the point is, we know it's done by the bad guys, but we don't, we need to help. And, and that it doesn't matter. We can't argue about how it happened. We don't, nobody knows, but the people who did it, the, the total truth of this. 
right? What we need to do is figure out how to help our other human beings. And that should be the focus. And I think and I'm just so glad we're having this conversation today, because opinions are like assholes, everyone's got that got them. And I think this is a good time for self reflection. It's always for me, if I feel triggered by somebody else's opinion, I have to take a moment and self reflect. I have many friends in my life that don't none of the people in my life agree with me 100%. And I would reckon mm -hmm. if I was a gambling woman, I would say everybody watching right now, no one in your life agrees with you 100%. But you still love them. There's still, there's still, I have, a, and I just want to say on my channel, and I think I can probably uh, say for you, Catherine, if you're, if you identify as a liberal or a Democrat, you're welcome on this channel. If you identify as a Republican or a conservative, you're welcome on this channel. If you identify as an atheist, you're welcome. You might not like our channel if you identify as an atheist, but you're welcome here. If you identify as agnostic or any religion, you're welcome here because this is how we learn and grow. And I personally, like hearing people's again that's why i got on youtube was to hear other people's perspectives and so that's i just why we have such a range of guests because it's so fascinating because you can't possibly be an expert in all these things and i think it's absolutely brilliant to have the opportunity to talk to people that have got completely different life experiences to what i have and to learn from them and i'm really grateful that everyone anyone that puts themselves out there to share that experience because we can all learn from every single person, every single animal that we interact with. And, you know, I think, I do think we're preaching to the perverted. And the reason we're having this conversation is we're assuming you're sitting there having a cup of tea with us and having the conversation with us. And, you know, we love your comments in there in the chat because we want to know what works for you. And actually, some of the best advice that I've had over the last three years has been from listeners in our, in our comments. It's been absolutely phenomenal. Yeah, we're, we hope we're, you're sitting at home going, God, I'm so glad you ladies mentioned this because I've been feeling really bad because my truth or friends don't want me and my normie friends. You're not alone because you're just a normal person who's self-reflecting. And there's one thing I wanted to bring up again because you talked about Ishmael Perez. And I know that a lot of our viewers understand this. When we bring guests on our channels, it's because we want to hear what they have to say. It doesn't mean we agree with everything that they're saying. And that is another thing. So stop judging people by who they bring on their channel, guys. They are, they might not, some interviewers, you don't know if they agree with, they just want to hear their perspective. It's a chance to learn and grow. And so I, and I actually, before we sign out today, I want to go back to my channel here quickly um, because I'm going to show you guys what I mean by this. And Catherine, you've got these same, some of these same guests coming up on your channel. We're branching out because we're fascinated by these people who have lived different lives than we have and what they, what they have to, um, to, to share with us. I just interviewed Davy Jackson who, and the reason why I reached out to him, well, he's a great, he's a, he's a great, he's a comedian. So he does a good show, but also he's a male who comes yeah. from a very conservative Christian back. We hear from women all the time. And I heard him on another channel and I thought it was fascinating. He's my age. We're the same age to hear from this man who is now very secular in his life, but grew up and to hear his perspective. I thought, what a fascinating viewpoint. And then of course I've had Claire Headley on. She's coming on again on my channel. No, she's coming on Catherine's channel to hear again, her perspective of growing up in Scientology. I have no idea what they, these two people, what their political beliefs are. No idea. I don't care. I think they're fascinating and I think they have so much to offer this. Listen, my boyfriend and I are registered two different political parties, right? It doesn't matter, right? And so I, I, I just hope that as we move forward into the age of Aquarius or whatever you want to talk, uh, whatever you want to call it, that we're coming into it in a place of being open of learning from other people that are different from us and not ostracizing them because they're different from us. 100%. And, you know, I'm at the, the range of people we've managed to talk about over this year, you know, it's fantastic. I mean, there's some people that have devoted their whole life to doing things for us. They're such unhung, unsung heroes. You know, anyone who hasn't seen the interview I had on my channel with Dane Wigington on Geoengineering Watch, absolutely incredible these people are really devoting their lives to really helping us there's shamans there's 
everything you could possibly imagine and also a lot of practical advice for ourselves because actually there's some really good people and some really good companies out there that are really making the world a better place and I think you know I have got a lot of faith in where we're at and where we're going but equally I do think we need to grow up quite a lot. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. And I'm so, and you guys, I know that with the Claire Headley interview and with Davey Jackson interview, I got new subscribers. Welcome to the channel, you guys. I'm so excited you're here. I know we might seem a little weird in this, in this episode, but uh, it's just a fun time over here. Um, and and you got some great, you Claire and Claire and Davey both probably hope going to be coming on your channel soon as well. Davey Jackson and Claire Headley will be back on my channel to continue these conversations. And I just, you guys, just go out there and embrace humanity. Embrace those who, who are different from you be the love that you wish to receive in the world be that which you wish to receive don't project like the people you're, you're claiming you don't like but listen to other opinions be open to other ways of life because the truth is infinite the cassiopeians say this the truth protect or knowledge protects knowledge is power and knowledge is infinite it's in it's never ending and so that's exciting it's exciting I, i'm it's so exciting. I just absolutely love learning. I'm a complete swatty pants. I love learning. And actually, one of the things I love even more than learning is unlearning. And I'm not going to stop. <laughs> so... <laughs> Oh, thank you so much. That was absolutely lovely. Thank you so much for everyone that joined us. We'll be back on my channel next week. We alternate for those of the, the, the new. We do one week on Bryce's, one week on mine. And yeah, um, I will put we'll all of Catherine's links because I know I got probably some new subscribers. I've got, I'll put all of Catherine's links down in the description box below because you open up another channel too, just with your holistic stuff. So, um, so if you you are new to my channel from those awesome interviews from these awesome humans that came on my channel, again, welcome. And all of Catherine's links, you'll be seeing them all on Catherine's channel too so um so anyway guys yeah thank you thank you and yeah give us ideas like in the yeah that's what I was just gonna say and what do you want to see discussed you know let us know what you find interesting discussed and we'll just have a chat yeah because you're part of these coffee chats too even though we can't see you we, we feel you there we feel you there <laughs> so anyway guys one day one day Catherine and I will do a world tour of coffee of coffee houses <laughs> around the world yeah absolutely and they've got to be ones where you can bring your dogs yeah yeah <laughs> yeah. yeah absolutely all right guys well we love you all have a wonderful wonderful safe weekend and we will talk to you soon bye everybody bye <laughs>